From exposing degenerate kid streamers for harassing people in public, to completely burying the career of one of the most popular gaming streamers in Twitch history, Penguin Zero Moist Critical can either be the savior or the downfall of a streamer's career. My name's Ryan, and we're gonna talk about 8 times where Penguin Zero has destroyed the careers of streamers after exposing them, starting off with Charlie who actually almost cancelled himself. The current controversy surrounding Charlie centered around one of Mr. Beast's longtime friends, Ava Chris Tyson, and after Chris was exposed for inappropriately talking to minors, the internet quickly turned against Charlie, accusing him of hypocrisy for not addressing the situation. Because just a couple of weeks earlier, Charlie had quickly condemned Dr. Disrespect for his pedophilic behavior. When covering the Ava Tyson situation, I was attacked by a lot of people for not being quick enough. Even though I covered it within like the first six hours, people were unsatisfied that I hadn't made a video within like the first 20 minutes of it dropping. And to make matters worse, one of Charlie's critics was Sneeko. Sneeko first called out Charlie in a live stream, stating that Charlie was not going to talk about the Chris situation because quote, he wants a Mr. Beast collab. On top of this, he was also accused of being transphobic because he didn't use Ava's proper pronouns which were she slash her. And when I did finally finish the full video covering all of it, it was another massive problem where now I only did it out of an obligation because people called me out and then I also got accused of being a transphobe because I didn't use Ava Tyson's preferred pronouns which were she her. I didn't know that. I thought just calling Ava Tyson by her name was okay and I had also heard when I went to the Mr. Beast thing someone refer to Ava Tyson with they. Charlie also addresses the fact that he was in a lose-lose situation as he was attacked by a huge portion of the internet for calling out Sneeko in the Ava Chris Tyson video on his pet pedophilic views. This led people to believe that Charlie was trying his best not to talk about Chris Tyson and called out Sneeko as a way to avoid this. And then annihilated by another good chunk of Twitter because I called out Sneeko, who was the main proponent about me covering for Mr. Beast to keep the collab alive. I wasn't talking about Ava Tyson because I wanted the Mr. Beast collab. And I talked about how absurd that statement was, especially given his history with fighting against the age of consent. He's been very vocal about how much he hates the age of consent. And so I talked about that briefly at the end of the video, which then changed the whole narrative for a lot of people where I never talked about Ava Tyson and only talked about Sneeko. So it was a complete lose-lose because if I didn't talk about what Sneeko was saying, I would have been called a coward for not addressing it and talking about like, well, he was going to cover for Mr. Beast until Sneeko called him out. So like if I didn't do it, I would have been attacked. I did do it, still got attacked. It really was unwinnable. However, despite the huge amount of criticism Charlie was receiving, the controversy was about to take another turn for the worse. As the back and forth between Sneeko and Moist Critical spawned a live debate between the two on the 26th of July about transgenderism, the age of consent, and marriage. One of the highlights of this debate was when Sneeko asks Charlie if he believes a child could go through hormone therapy and change their gender when they're a child. Do you believe that somebody can go through uh, hormone therapy, can they change their gender if they're a child? I think that's totally fine as long as everyone is consenting. Charlie's response caused a huge uproar across the internet, as Charlie made it clear that he believed a child, specifically a 12-year-old, could undergo surgery and change their gender if everyone consented. The reaction to Charlie's take was so bad that even a good portion of his own fans were against him, with some comments reading, anyone arguing to defend little boys cutting off their genitals is okay, is a weirdo, moist hypocritical. You know it's bad when even Charlie's fans are saying he lost the debate. Not gonna lie, Charlie should disappear for a while after this. However, in his video, Charlie tries to fix his mistake and explained that he thought Sneeko was speaking hyperbole. My response to his question about kids transitioning and the way he would pose that question would be by asking if I thought it was okay if kids who want to switch their gender go to the doctor and get their d cut off. Is it okay if a nine-year-old goes to a doctor and gets their cut off right then and there? And when posed with that question, I replied with yes. And I've talked about this on stream many, many times now and I'll talk about it again here. I thought he was talking in hyperbole. I thought he was just exaggerating, being over the top, talking about the entire subject of transitioning. I had no idea that any living, breathing human being actually thought that that's how transitioning works. Where you just go into a doctor saying, I feel like switching genders and they lay you down on the operating table and just snip your whole fucking meat off. I didn't know that that's what he actually believed. I, I didn't know he was speaking literally. I thought he was just referring to the entire process of transitioning and just using this over-the-top statement to encapsulate all of it. 
In this video, Charlie also clears up the confusion about his supposed retirement and goes into detail about allegations of being a fence sitter and not having any controversial opinions of his own. Prayers up in the chat for Moist Critical. It seems like he's quitting YouTube indefinitely for a mental health break because he got uh, the debate hurt his feelings. He still hasn't uploaded it. In my opinion, it seems like he's dodging uploading the debate a little bit by retiring. But come out of retirement, upload the debate, everything will be fine. We're praying for you. I hope you're okay. But I mean, I gotta be honest, I've been through way worse when it comes to getting beat up by the internet pretty much all the time. And I'm still standing. I never stop. I keep on going. The solution is not taking a break. The solution is to work hard every single day. So Moist, if you want to talk, I DM'd you. If you want to talk off stream, I'd be really willing and able to do that. And I hope you're doing good. So let's start with the most recent one today. My retirement. I didn't know I was retiring. That's news to me. Charlie further explains that his opinions aren't an attempt to pander to any specific side and says he's just a normal guy who doesn't have any deep thoughts. And a huge critique of me that I've always seen is Charlie's a fence sitter. He's just a f***ing fence sitting enlightened centrist cuck this and that. And I've always said for the entire time I've been on the internet, I'm not special. I'm literally just a normal guy who got very lucky. I just sit here, joke about shit, talk about my opinion on things and nothing else. I don't have a unique perspective on things. I don't have deep insight into the vicissitudes of certain things. I am literally just a guy who yaps has some fun, talks about shit, does some wacky stuff as well, and that's it. It's just not that deep. However, Sneeko reacts to Charlie's video and accuses Charlie of being able to easily cancel and condemn people for their actions, but can't seem to handle the heat when he's in a similar situation. So you like canceling everybody? You like always calling this scammer, this Sneeko did this, fresh and fit fake alpha male, and then when you get cooked, now you, the internet's too difficult? This is a taste of your own medicine, and it didn't even get posted on Batu. It's clear that this controversy has definitely affected Penguin Zero negatively, but despite Charlie being in this amount of controversy and almost cancelling himself, it's safe to say that he's managed to salvage his reputation and is still one of the most respected YouTubers and streamers on the platform. However, the same can't be said for the next streamer that Penguin Zero cancelled, Dr. Disrespect. Dr. Disrespect started streaming on YouTube in August 2020 after originally being banned on Twitch, and over the course of 4 years, he built his audience to nearly 5 million subscribers. However, this would all come crashing down, as on the 22nd of June 2024, Cody Connors, an ex-Twitch employee, would make a tweet that would spell doom for Dr. Disrespect's career. However, to make matters even worse, Penguin Zero would finally put the nail in the coffin for Dr. Disrespect's career by not only exposing him in two videos, but also tweeting about the situation which reads, Holy shit, that's actually shocking. Confirming messaging a m inappropriately, but saying there wasn't any real intent is almost verbatim what people used to say to Chris Hansen. In Charlie's video titled, Dr. Disrespect's situation just got worse, he further addresses the controversy and explains how Dr. Disrespect had just exposed himself for inappropriately a minor. And then today, Dr. Disrespect released another statement where he admitted to the claim of talking to a minor through Twitch whispers inappropriately. However, he denies that there was any real intent behind the messages, which is a crazy thing to say. Like, if any of you have watched To Catch a Predator, you'll recognize that tactic, that, that little maneuver right there, because that's something that was pretty frequent on that show. When a predator went down and talked with Chris Hansen, a lot of them said that same thing pretty much. Like, oh, no, 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 I didn't mean any of that. I was actually just teaching them a lesson. Charlie then goes into detail and reads out Dr. Disrespect's tweet about the situation and points out the fact that Dr. Disrespect had actually removed the word minor from his tweet and added it back once people had started to notice. I never even met the individual. I went through a lengthy arbitration regarding a civil dispute with Twitch and that case was resolved by a settlement. Let me be clear, it was not a criminal case against me and no criminal charges have ever been brought against me. Now the doc actually edited this statement twice. So initially he posted it with the word minor in it saying, were there messages with an individual minor? The answer is yes. But then shortly after he published it, he edited the word minor out of it. So he removed that, he redacted it like a fucking CIA document trying to bury it, just snapping it out of existence. So then it read, were there messages with an individual? The answer is yes. But people were quick to notice the edit and you can actually check edit history on Twitter, which I didn't know you can do, but you could clearly see that the original no longer matched the current one because he took the word minor out. So when people caught him red-handed, he just edited it. 
Charlie also completely debunks the argument of Dr. Disrespect not knowing the age of the person in question. He makes a good argument that if Doc really didn't know the individual's age, he would have addressed it in the tweet. But instead, Dr. Disrespect said an individual minor, suggesting he knew all along. Now, what's not clear and what a lot of people are coping with is that maybe Dr. Disrespect didn't know the age of the person he was communicating with, but I truly feel if that was the case, Dr. Disrespect would have mentioned that, saying that he had those communications with this person that he believed was of age but turned out to be a minor. I think if that was the reality of that situation, if he truly communicated with someone that he thought was of age but turned out to be a minor, I think he would have mentioned that in this statement, but he didn't. He didn't say that he was under the impression he was communicating with an adult. He just says that he had conversations with an, in with an individual minor. He doesn't say anything like, oh, they were actually one day away from being 18, or I really thought they were, you know, in their 20s, or anything like that. And I think if that was what happened, it would have been mentioned here. I really do. But there's no mention of that. Charlie also brought up the fact that even the people closest to Dr. Disrespect haven't said anything about Doc not knowing the age of the individual either. I also think it's pretty telling that some of the closest people to Dr. Disrespect are coming forward saying how unacceptable it was in distancing themselves from him because if he didn't know that he was communicating with a minor, he probably would have told them at the very least, but they're not saying that either. So here's Robert Bowling, one of his business partners here, saying, if you inappropriately message a minor, I cannot work with you, period. I promised to only act on facts and I did. So I just really don't think there's a whole lot of wiggle room about Doc not knowing that he was communicating with a minor. Like, I feel like there's been plenty of opportunities now for that information to have come out from somewhere, but nobody is saying that other than people theorizing and hoping that maybe that's the case. But Doc himself has never said that that was a possibility. He'd never even hinted that he didn't know the person's age, and the people closest to him aren't saying that either. So I really think that it's likely that he did know that. Charlie then calls out some of Dr. Disrespect's audience for trying to dismiss the situation and defend him despite the damning evidence, with many of them leading with the argument that Dr. Disrespect did not meet up with the minor in question. Full stop. It's inexcusable. No matter how you spin it, that is a horrible thing. Now, he may not have met up with the minor in question, however, was that his decision? Was he the one that decided not to meet up with him? Because with the information that's been come out, now again keep in mind, we don't have access to the, the chat log, like the conversations that took place, but from all the sources that have come out from like Bloomberg and all of that, it sounds like the conversation they had did talk about meeting up at TwitchCon. As of today, Dr. Disrespect has hinted to the fact that he will be returning to streaming as he posted a picture of him playing chess or checkers. Charlie also pointed out the fact that despite what Dr. Disrespect has done, he's still going to have a massive audience that's still going to support him. So I know when he comes back, he will probably have tons of viewers and tons of donations out the fucking wazoo, saying things like, keep your head up doc, don't let cancel culture get you down. Uh, it's just a fucking cancel culture mob that ca that came after you. You're a victim of that mob. That's it. Which is just so unhinged. He has openly admitted, in his own words, to inappropriately talking to a minor. Shown by the replies under his most recent tweet which reads, Bring the doc back. He apologized like a man. That's all I need. Carry on. However, despite people still defending Dr. Disrespect, Charlie's video has amassed over 5 million views and has definitely played a huge part in cancelling Dr. Disrespect. And the same can definitely be said for the next streamer on our list, Sop Caitlin. If there is one word to describe this streamer, it would be self-centered. Sub Caitlin is a popular streamer on Twitch with over 350,000 followers, with her audience being mostly made up of simps who constantly beg for her attention. However, one fateful stream on January 6 would be the catalyst of one of the most embarrassing controversies in internet history. Caitlyn would host a stream with one of her mods, Dilly, and right from the very start, the stream quickly turned into an embarrassing and humiliating mess. Throughout the entire stream, she would completely embarrass him by constantly making him the butt of the joke and repeatedly showing her clear disgust towards him. Penguin Zero noticed the stream going viral and couldn't help but talk about it. Charlie goes into detail and explains how the whole stream was her idea and the fact that she decided to embarrass Daily live on stream to put on a show for her audience was straight up evil. Can't do it. <laughs> Okay. Can you go closer? Okay, this close? Okay. Yes! Okay, okay, whenever you're ready. Can you pucker up? Pucker up! This is my, I have small lips. 
She's putting on this big song and dance about how gross and disgusting this was when it was her idea. She's doing this just to make him feel even worse and put on a show for her chat at this guy's expense. Like, oh, this loveless loser virgin flew all the way here and, oh, I just had to kiss him. Like, that's so mean. And this should be a wake-up call to her chat that, like, donates money to her under this idea that she's going to like them or something like that or parasocially donating to her because they think that they're gonna be friends or even more than that. This should be the biggest wake-up call. Charlie also proceeds to debunk any arguments that suggest the comments made towards Dilly were purely jokes, and that it was clear that Caitlyn was using him as a laughing stock for her audience. Caitlyn proceeds to share the most embarrassing stories about Dilly to entertain her stream, and mocks him in front of hundreds of thousands of people. Cute couple, baby, are not dating. I did not claim this. Sorry, that's so mean, but I'm, don't claim it. So yeah, one hour stream, so every minute counts. I made a donation goal of $500. I will kiss Dilly. So we hit it, we hit it. But hopefully, I will be drunk for that. Let's take the first shot of the night, yeah? Is it too early? No, cheer. And I made all the boys go with Dilly to help change his pants. So I think Dilly threw away his chunky throat pants in the trash. Dilly had the same size hands. Oh my god, you have baby hands. No way. Yeah, we have the same size hands. That means you're small. Charlie then exposes Caitlyn's manipulative nature as she tries to constantly downplay the insults by saying they're quote, good friends, which continues Dilly to continue being a sad source of entertainment for her stream. Now, there are a couple times in the stream that she says that they're good friends, so it's all, you know, in good fun. And what a load of dirty barnacles. I think she says that to try and convince Dilly, and Dilly, it, he believes it. Dilly's bought into that fantasy. This does not strike me as two people that are friends. This strikes me as her using him for content, as a punching bag. That's what this all seems like. She proceeds to degrade Dilly and answer mean questions from her stream, such as, would you rather get back with your abusive ex or Dilly for six months? Oh my god, either go back with my ex or get with Dilly for six months. Fuck. Okay, so in case you guys know or don't know, uh, then I don't want to say his name out loud. This ex fucking traumatized me. Get a gambling addiction, drug addiction, addiction. Like, he actually fucked me up, okay? So either go through like, trauma and emotional abuse or date Dilly for six months. Time to get back with my ex. Okay, next question. <laughs> On top of being called out by Charlie, Caitlyn was also scrutinized by the public for the way she treated Dilly. She managed to find the one Twitch mod who isn't a sexual predator and treated him as if he was. What a peach. She has the vibe of someone who is a bully in school and has never matured past that phase, just constantly trying to put others down to boost her ego. However, after Charlie posted his video, Caitlyn would post a tweet addressing the situation which reads, None of you know me, Dilly, or how our relationship is IRL. I have already apologized to Dilly privately, and there's no animosity between us. The stream was staged. You guys are more upset than Dilly is and trying to make him a victim when he doesn't even see himself as one. Even though Caitlyn claimed that she and Dilly were friends and the stream was staged, Charlie still wanted to know more about their dynamic and hopped on a call with Dilly. However, it seemed as though Caitlyn had completely brainwashed Dilly as during their call, Dilly seemed to think Caitlyn truly cared for him and was a genuine friend. You don't have to play this role for her. You don't have to be stuck being the weirdo Twitch mod who grosses her out so much she goes and fucking hawks in the bathroom and yaks, right? It's it's ridiculous. It's just mean for the sake of being mean. I have to set my emotions aside when I hear things like that. And that's, I've just been used to that kind of stuff. That's just what kind of shit I decide to deal with, right? In the end, Charlie calling out sub Caitlyn has definitely impacted her public image and generally made people view her as a manipulative and selfish streamer who would do anything for views and attention, even at the cost of other people's feelings. And when it comes to streamers who Charlie has called out for doing anything for views and attention, there's no better person to mention than Jack Doherty. Jack Doherty is infamous for being a public nuisance while also antagonizing and picking fights with anyone he comes across. His bad habits of pushing boundaries and seeking conflict 
clout only fuel his relentless pursuit of attention. But bad habits aren't just for those chasing clout, they're also something we all struggle with. And that's where today's sponsor, Fume, comes in. An award-winning flavored air device that draws flavor right to your mouth, no vapor, no nicotine so it's not addictive, and no batteries. Flavored air isn't like vaping. If vapor was compared to sticky soda, Fume cores are closer to herbal teas. It's not addictive, totally non-toxic, and it uses no electronics or combustion. So you can enjoy it guilt-free anywhere. Plus, Fume fills that void that ditching a bad habit can leave. And with the design that's made to be fidget with, it's a great way to calm anxiety too. At first, I didn't know what to think about Fume, but after trying all their delicious flavors, I was sold on their crisp mint flavor, which keeps your breath smelling fresh. Fume has served over 300,000 customers, and you can be the next success story. For a limited time, use my code Ryan's Pictures to get your free topper. It's the perfect accessory to your Fume device. Slip it onto the mouthpiece for a softer, warmer feel. It's chewable for those who love to fidget, and it's also reusable. Head to tryfume.com, that's tryfume.com, and use code Ryan's Pictures or scan the QR code on screen to get your free Fume topper when you order your journey pack today. However, Jack's popularity peaked around December 2023, and unfortunately for him, his actions got him on Penguin Zero's radar. And to make matters worse, Charlie uploaded a video calling out Jack Doherty for his cowardly actions. Jack Doherty's infamy online reached its crescendo about a month ago, hitting its peak, mainly because he became known as just this punching bag. His face was a knuckle sandwich magnet, so most of his viral clips were him getting slapped or being involved in some kind of fight that broke out because he truly is just an insufferable asshole to be around. Go! Charlie proceeds to explain how embarrassing Jack is and how truly insufferable he is. He travels with his bodyguards that are basically his babysitters, his nannies, really his guardian angels. They're the only thing that's kept him alive this long because he is such a piece of shit. Everybody wants to fight him when he does things like this, but his bodyguards protect him. And he still has the gall, the fucking chutzpah, to stand behind his bodyguards, peek his head over, and continue to insult the person. And just to make Jack even more unlikable, Charlie calls out Jack on his behavior and how he constantly flexes how much money he makes from managing only f***ing models. He makes all of his money there, basically, and he will never let you forget he is making a lot of money through managing these only f***ing models. He frequently posts these flexes, talk shit all you want, you wish you could spend this much on your credit card in just two weeks and it's just an absurd amount of money that he's dumping on garbage. He posts these at least once a week and it's clearly engagement farming, he's just baiting people into getting mad at him and just shitting on him because he's realized that that is his formula to success. He'll just cosplay as the communal urinal for the internet to collectively come take a piss in because it gets him a little money off of like the Twitter posts, but maybe it gets him a couple extra only f subscribers or a few curious kids that'll watch his stream to see what kind of degeneracy unfolds. He's basically playing the villain. And just to add to Charlie's complete beatdown of Jack Doherty, on top of this, Charlie's videos on Jack Doherty have clearly had a negative impact on his channel and slowly made him fall into irrelevancy. And despite having 14 million subscribers, he struggles to hit 100k views on his videos. It's clear that Jack Doherty is one of the most hated streamers on the internet. However, the next victim of Moist Critical could be contending for that title, and that streamer is none other than Neon. Fast forward to April 2024, Neon's degenerate streams would catch the attention of Moist Critical. He recently got released from jail to everyone's dismay, and he is already back on the grind producing content for the weirdos that no one really likes. Yesterday, he came up with a banger idea for his content where he actually linked up with a criminal who is somehow a bigger loser than Neon. On, if you can believe that. Another popular YouTuber by the name of Squeeze Benz, who's quote, the most dangerous driver in New York, would feature on Neon's stream. Squeeze is infamous for performing dangerous stunts on the public road, including cutting up busy traffic and running from cops. And Charlie proceeds to explain how during the stream, they drive recklessly and get involved in a hit and run. So they streamed on kick, of course, driving recklessly, and then it ends up with them in a hit and run. Okay. Alright, we're good, we're good. Calm, 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 calm. Come, 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 come. Oh my god! Oh, oh my fuck! Oh, what the fuck? Oh, shit. What the fuck? Oh, shit. 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 Oh, shit.
I shot me, I shot me, I shot me. Neon begs to be let out of the car, and his wish was granted. They let him out, and then he starts running away, saying that he needs to get inside and off the street. He starts treating it like he's trying to lose stars in Grand Theft Auto here. He also exposes Neon for basically setting up a premeditated crime, just for the sake of attention and views. Because this was clearly the idea behind the stream, is get together with the most dangerous driver and do some dangerous driving for Neon's stream to entertain his audience. So it'd be like premeditated crimes, pretty much, for the sake of kicks. Streams. He also calls out Neon for trying to cover up his illegal activities by saying that the stream was just a Q&A. So he's trying to say that this whole thing was just supposed to be a Q&A where he sits in his car and Squeeze only goes 10 over the speed limit. I highly doubt that's what was agreed upon. Squeeze is addicted to attention, so he has done an interview before, and even in that interview, he does something similar to what he did with Neon here. Granted, to a lesser degree with the other interviewer, because obviously the other guy is taken more seriously than someone as pathetic as Neon, but still, there's no way Neon went into this not expecting to get into high-speed illegal shenanigans. That must have been the entire point of doing this. Why would you just interview him again after he was just interviewed by somebody else? Like, it, it wouldn't make any sense. After criticizing Neon's degenerate actions, Charlie points out how unwatchable Neon's streams were, but also the fact that Neon and Squeeze were not only putting their own lives in danger, but the lives of others on the road as well. Even before the hit and run, this just seems unwatchable. Who wants to listen to him peek the mic through squealing the entire time? Plus, I just find this entire activity of driving recklessly on the interstate super f cringe. I can always appreciate talented driving, but that's not this. This trend of douchebags just driving extremely fast on the interstate and weaving between cars cutting up is not impressive. Like, I don't think there's anything impressive about that at all. My fucking grandmother used to do that when I was a kid, and I hated it then too. She used to cruise around on the interstate taking me to Perkins in her 1978 Chevrolet ass tutor or whatever, and she'd do this, and there was nothing cool about it. My grandmother used to do this, and it wasn't cool then either, but now all of a sudden there's a lot of people that think it is, I guess, because it's becoming somewhat popular. It sh sucks. All you're doing is putting your life and everyone else's life at risk for nothing, literally nothing. Neon was indeed one of the most controversial and attention-seeking streamers out there. However, when it comes to streamers who take part in illegal activity, the next streamer that Moist Critical calls out on this list is even worse than Neon. Despite only having a couple hundred followers on Kick, these two streamers managed to get one of their drunk driving clips to go viral, and of course, this caught the attention of Penguin Zero. There's few things on this planet that make me more mad than drunk drivers. I've said that a lot in the past, so that shouldn't come as some kind of shocking revelation, but what is shocking is the clip that I saw today from two degenerate Kick streamers who proudly broadcast themselves drinking and driving while speeding on the interstate and acting like they're playing Need for Speed Underground 2, literally putting every innocent person's life at risk on that road. Charlie proceeds to show the two streamers racing on the interstate, changing lanes recklessly while driving. So, Inbred Speed Racer is broadcasting all this on Kick, which is very successful this, for this type of content because the audience loves to see people gamble with their lives. I have no doubt his viewers were on the edge of their seat, biting at their nails, wondering, are they about to witness two stupid assholes get themselves killed? And you can see in the chat that they are celebrating. They are pumping their fists. This is the best content ever because they might get to watch these dumb f***ing douchebags die. Yeehaw. What a f disgusting situation. Charlie then goes into the possibility of the alcohol being replaced with water, however he explains how it's still no excuse to be driving that recklessly on the interstate. The Smirnoff has been replaced with water, doesn't change the reckless driving, that's not smoke and mirrors or CGI or anything, they're not exactly on the set where the Mandalorian was filmed or anything, so that's still 100% authentic, but I guess it is possible that they're not drinking and driving but I find that very unlikely. But let's just go ahead and suspend disbelief. Let's assume they're faking drunk driving. They're so pathetic. What an absolute vermin. So desperate for clout from kick of all places. That's like being the class president of the loony bin that you'll pretend to be committing a crime for their entertainment. They are there to just watch you ruin your life and you're proudly dancing for them, you absolute clowns. But the worst part about this is they're not just ruining their lives, they could have potentially ended the lives of completely innocent people around them. That is just 
evil, no matter how you spin this. The individuals in the stream proceed to throw the glass bottle out the window, and to say this pissed off Charlie would be an understatement, as he begins to roast them and call them losers for thinking this kind of behavior is quote cool. Just throws the bottle of Smirnoff out the window there for some reason. It's like a child with a sugar rush. Just has so much energy, so much adrenaline going on right now that he needs to break something. So he throws the bottle of Smirnoff out the window. What losers? What absolute losers? They really think that this is hard. They think that this is cool somehow. The guy driving isn't doing anything impressive. He's driving on an interstate changing lanes. It's just dangerous. It's not impressive. Anyone can do that if they have a disregard for their lives and the safety of everyone around them as well. And to wrap up the row session, Charlie points out how these two degenerates were risking their lives for just 125 viewers and 6 chatters in their stream. Risking your life for 125 viewers and 6 chatters. Nice. Imagine just throwing everything away, committing crimes for 125 viewers that are all there just to see if you're gonna die or not. What a miserable existence that must be. Charlie also acknowledges that if they don't get locked up, that they'll keep doing this and put the lives of others at risk. With a huge wave of streamers like Jack Doherty and Neon becoming insanely popular, it's led to multiple kid streamers to look up to them and try to copy what they do. And of course, this led to Charlie covering them and calling them out on their degenerate actions. Everyone knows that public nuisance streamers that go around harassing strangers, causing a commotion, and just making everyone's lives around them more miserable, suck. Like, that's not a hot take. Everyone knows that. They're just this miasma of cringe that cause everyone a massive headache. But, as I and many others have pointed out for years now, they do inspire an entire generation of young viewers to be losers like them. Charlie exposes how the kid is taking inspiration from Jack Doherty and is trying to get famous by being a public nuisance. And now he's trying to suckle milk out of Jack Doherty's t here. He's just trying to get that clout through being a piece of shit. Charlie also explains how the kid's entire stream is just him causing trouble and fighting people in the streets. His entire brand is purely centered around harassing people. His whole stream is basically either arguing or fighting people, and this is him just taking food from a stranger's table, so they're using their age as a shield because they know there's gonna be no real repercussions. Don't put your, don't put your hand in my food again! Do not do that! You don't do that to people! Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Stop filming me! You're a nobody! It's a live stream, you can't stop it. Who the are you? What the fuck are you? Yo, give me the phone. Now you're not touching my phone. Touch my phone. I'm gonna actually do something. What are you gonna do? Beat me up? Back the fuck up. Back the I will. I want to know how old are you? Five. Charlie also points out how the kid copies Jack Doherty's style by using a bodyguard to protect him against anyone who tries to confront him. The reason I say that he's clearly inspired by him is because this kid also travels around with a bodyguard. That's who that dweeb with the TikTok broccoli hair was that's positioned behind the woman here. That's supposed to be this kid's muscle. Or backup, perhaps. Maybe sidekick. I, I believe it's supposed to be his bodyguard, though, like Jack Doherty has. But the clear difference between Jack Doherty's bodyguard and this kid's is Jax is a full-grown adult man who is like a professional bodyguard. However, this degenerate Jack Doherty clone was actually banned on Twitch after this incident, and Charlie decides to not give the kid any sort of publicity. While this kid luckily didn't get beat up for being a public nuisance, the next streamer actually had multiple violent encounters with the public as a result of his degenerate actions. Johnny Somali is a small streamer who used to stream on Kick but recently moved to Rumble and he is infamous for his controversial public streams that usually lead him to being arrested or beat up. The streamer himself announced that he would do anything necessary to achieve clout. In August 2023, he got arrested in Japan after breaking into a construction site and in December 2023, was charged $1400 by Japanese prosecutors for playing loud music and being a nuisance, and of course led him to being covered by Moist Critical himself. There's not a soul on this earth that actually actually likes this guy, his own community only follows him to try and get him arrested or beat up, and when it comes to those two metrics, his community is more successful than the Beatles. The amount of times that his chat has gotten him beat up or arrested 
is incredible. Like, this man can't go live without getting his shit pushed in or it finishing with him in handcuffs, all because he's following the chat's advice. And he's so delusional, he doesn't recognize that they're only there watching, waiting for him to get hurt, and nothing else. They're laughing at him, not with him. Charlie then explains how much of a loser Johnny Somali is, and how he goes around the globe throwing racist slurs at everyone. I've talked about him before, everyone's talked about him before. He's the public nuisance streamer that travels the globe and just makes everyone's lives miserable around him by harassing them, spamming racist insults at them, disrespecting the cultures that he visits, and he keeps getting arrested. Oh, you a bad bitch. I swear to God. You a bad bitch. I said you to dinner. I swear to God. I swear to God. I'll change your life. I'll change your life, baby. Baby, I'll change your life. I promise you. You a bad bitch right here. I'll change your life, baby girl. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the sidewalk. 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 <laughs> Charlie then goes into detail about how wherever he goes, he either gets arrested or beat up. Charlie also points out how much Cloud has corrupted his brain, as Johnny seems to do anything that he knows will get his chat excited. This guy's a f***ing loser. Everyone knows that. I'm not even gonna bother saying his name because he's just a vermin whose brain is so poisoned by clout that the only thing he thinks matters in the world is attention. He needs attention more than he needs oxygen, so I'm not gonna be saying his name. I'm sure you've already seen this NPC plastered all over the internet. He's one of those very few unifying moments that brings everyone together because we all dislike him the exact same. It's clear that Johnny Somali does not have any remorse for his actions, because every time he's released from jail, he goes back to doing the same thing. I really hope at some point he does get thrown in jail for an extremely long period of time. He breaks so many laws and broadcasts it proudly online and makes a mockery out of all the legal systems that he's taking advantage of here because he keeps getting released. Why? That doesn't make any sense. Keep him in prison for this sh It'd be totally understandable and it'd be a huge PR win. Don't forget to go to tryfume.com slash Ryan's Pictures or scan the QR code and use code Ryan's Pictures to get your free fume topper when you order your journey pack today.